in a world where carbs are your enemy, you need one man to help you fight your battles. That man is Jimmy. Combating nutrition, disinformation, and general bull. It's Jimmy Rants. JimmyRants.com. You've been looking for a quality brand of CBD oil and didn't know where to turn? Let me introduce you to Botan CBD. Go to BotanCBD.com, that's B O T A N CBD.com, and you'll see a full line of CBD oil products. The benefits of CBD oil are plentiful, including pain relief, anti inflammation, mental clarity and focus, stress and anxiety reliever, and the list goes on. I've been using Botan CBD oil on my sciatica pain and it makes it disappear. You can rub it on the body or take it orally and you can trust that Botan CBD is the highest quality CBD oil on the market. They are a pharmaceutical grade organic CBD small batch and handcrafted for you. Head on over to BotanCBD.com and use the code Jimmy at checkout for 15% off your first order. Live life well. Botan CBD. What's up, what's up, you guys? Welcome back to another Instagram Live, and we're here with another episode of Jimmy Rants. JimmyRants.com is the website, and if you want to engage in the show, you got to go follow me live over on Instagram. We do try to go live a couple times a day. I'm at Livin' Low Carb Man, L-I-V-I-N-L-O-W-C-A-R-B-M-A-N. Once you're there, you can engage live in the content, just like Val and Marina Baba and Rat Dog Finney and Joe and Kitty Caddick, all these guys are coming in right now to engage live. We also go live over on Facebook Live. If you would prefer to be on Facebook, I'm over on Facebook, and so we also simulcast here. Thank you guys for being here. Same content. I go in a little bit early on Facebook, and I also do the Jimmy Rants after party on Facebook, but uh, same content, the core of the content as here on Instagram. If you missed the live, you can watch it on replay for up to 24 hours. After 24 hours, it does disappear. Be sure to watch it on replay uh, on YouTube at that point because that's the only place it'll be after 24 hours because it does disappear. So type in a keyword search, Jimmy Rants, either in a Google search or a YouTube search. You can also just go straight to the website, JimmyRants.com. We house, I wanna say we have like the last dozen Jimmy Rants. So if you've missed some recently, just pop on over to the website, jimmyrants.com, and all of them are embedded right there towards the top of the page so that you never miss an episode. Finally, the best of the best moments of this here show are in podcast form. It's the Jimmy Rants podcast over on Apple Podcasts as well as Stitcher. All of these links, you guys, are at jimmyrants.com. Today's Jimmy Rants. It's gonna be some good news for a change. Uh, I was kindly chided the other day. You know, uh, you should you should do like a Jimmy Raves counterpunch to your Jimmy rants because all I hear you do is rant about this and there. Well, number one, ranting is kind of fun. Have you ever tried it? (laughs) Uh, So I do love ranting about the idiocy that is out there in the world of nutritional health and responding to the stupid headlines that come out there and the dumb studies that are based on data, not people. But today I got a Jimmy Raves, so to speak, because it's a good thing that is happening out there and it's addressing this common concern uh, or common notion that people put out there that, oh, if you wanna manage your weight and your health, all you have to do is just regularly commit to exercise. Have you ever heard some numbskull, hey bro, all you gotta do, oh, uh-huh. All you gotta do is just exercise at the gym. <laughs> Don't they tell you that? Don't they tell you you just need to work out in the gym, do this nonsense exercise, and every all of your woes will be okay? I'd love to slap people like that, but they're usually bigger than me muscle-wise, so... <laughs> No, exercise is not the be-all, end-all. And so what we're going to talk about here today is exercise 
won't work for weight loss if you're still eating a whole lot of sugar and carbs in your diet. And I have this really awesome piece here today. This is that positive news. Uh, and this was published in the British Journal of Sports Medicine. And uh, it was an editorial that was written in there. And the headline, by the way, of this article, exercise can't save us. Our sugar intake is the real culprit, says expert. So good news, finally. So there were three authors in this editorial in the British Journal of Sports Medicine. They argue that the myth that exercise is the key to weight loss and to health is both erroneous and pervasive and that it must come to an end. <sighs> Hallelujah. I remember 12 years ago, it was Gary Taubes when he came out with his book, Good Calories, Bad Calories. One of the tenets that the, uh, that the health space uh, focused in on about his philosophy was that exercise does not help you lose weight. And they were like, oh, not possible. Exercise is the key to weight loss and blah, blah, blah. I remember uh, Gary went on the Larry King show. Larry was not there that night. I think they had Joy Behar as the guest host. Dr. Oz was on to debate Gary. And they also had Jillian Michaels on to talk about the exercise aspect. And I remember Gary saying, hey, look, all the studies, all the everything shows the exercise is really not that beneficial when it comes to, uh, to weight loss. And those of us that have been in this space, yes, exercise is beautiful. Exercise gives you good conditioning. Exercise makes you feel better, makes you stronger. All of these good things do happen with exercise. But it's not the be all end all in weight loss, despite what the biggest loser tried to show on television that, oh, the key to weight loss is all this exercise in the gym and being screamed at by trainers, apparently. Um, what these three authors in this editorial in the British Journal of Sports Medicine are saying is, hey, look, we need to look at the nutrition of the people that are doing this exercise because that's what matters. If their nutrition ain't right, which means they're eating sugar and carbs, um, then all the exercise in the world won't help. You've heard the phrase, you can't out-exercise a bad diet. This is, this is exactly it. The evidence that diet matters more than exercise is now so overwhelming, says these three authors, that it has got to be heated. We can exercise to the moon and back, but still be fat from all the sugar and the carbs that we consume. Now, this is not licensed for those of you uh, that that eat a ketogenic diet. Well, if it's just the sugar and carbs that counts, I don't need to ever exercise. That's not what they're trying to say. But they're saying don't think that exercise is that be all end all when it comes to pursuing weight loss. Perhaps even more jarring is that we can be a normal weight and exercise and still be unhealthy if we're eating poorly. So there's this phrase called TOFI thin outside, fat inside. And so there's a lot of metabolically fat people that because you don't see the fatness on the outside, you have no idea just how unhealthy they are metabolically, insulin resistant they are metabol metabolically on the inside. Which is why sometimes I'm really glad that I have my fat for all the world to see. And while yes, there's a lot of baggage that comes from that, I at least know, okay, that's a visible sign that something is going on on the inside. I can't imagine being someone who is naturally thin and thinking that natural thinness gave me natural healthfulness. This is exactly what happened with my wife, Christine, by the way. When I met her, she was 90 pounds soaking wet. When we got married in 1995, she was 95 pounds and she never ever thought she had a health issue. Although in her mind, this is the funny thing, at 95 pounds, she thought she was fat. And so she started eating a low fat diet and she started having some ramifications from the low fat diet in her health and in micronutrient deficiencies and all kinds of things happening to the point that by the time her health started getting bad, she was so far down the rabbit trail, she couldn't do anything about it 
uh, without consequences. And so now, today, she has no gallbladder. Today, she has an autoimmune disease of Hashimoto's. Uh, today, she still struggles with some hormonal imbalances, all predicated on thinking that she was healthy because of her thinness back in the day. Whereas those of us that have weight on the body, we've always been trying to pursue healthier choices. It's why keto has been such a godsend, even in the midst of not getting, maybe not getting to our full weight loss goal of what we'd like to be down to. But the fact is it's improved our health. So we, instead of tofu, we need uh, fat outside, thin inside. Foti, instead of tofu, we're foti. Go team foti. All right, uh, so they say we need a basic reboot of our understanding of health, which has to involve the food industry's powerful PR machinery since that was part of the problem to begin with. Well, good luck with that. The food companies have made hand over fist uh, in money, all at the altar of pretending like they care about your health. And so, no, I do not see the food industry's PR machinery helping one bit to unravel this. The last thing they want to do is take away the gravy train. And the gravy train has been refined carbohydrates, sugar, high fructose corn syrup, you name it. That has what's made them great money. The major point the team makes, and again, if you're just joining us, we're reading from an editorial that was in the British Journal of Sports Medicine who say you can't out-exercise a bad diet. The real culprit in weight, law, in weight management uh, is getting the sugar and the carbs out of your diet and not exercising more as is usually the case that's made. Uh, the, the public doesn't really understand the exercise in and of itself doesn't lead to weight loss, again, because of the perception of shows like The Biggest Loser and others. It may lead to a number of excellent health effects, which it does, but weight loss, if you're not also greatly restricting your calories, is not one of the benefits that come from exercise. They write in the paper, regular physical activity reduces the risk of developing cardiovascular disease, type 2 diabetes, dementia, and some cancers by as much as 30%. However, physical activity does not promote weight loss. And this is such a shocker. There's so many things when you get into this space that you learn that you've always just believed was true. And one of those things is exercise is a key to weight loss. Exercise, as Gary Taub so astutely pointed out in his book, Good Calories, Bad Calories, the role that exercise plays is it makes you hungry. It does. And you guys that regularly exercise, you know that. It gives you wiggle room to eat a few more calories than you would have. And if you like to eat, okay, that's a good thing. It means you get to eat more calories when you work out. But its role is not to help you lose weight. Its role will change your hormones to make you want to have more food in your belly. So that's something that's shocking to a lot of people when they first learn. In the last 30 years, exercise has relatively stayed the same while being overweight and obese has skyrocketed. So something else must be at play here, like the type of foods that we're eating. That part has gotten slowly, uh, steadily worse over the years as highly processed sugary foods and sodas, what I call crappy garbage, have taken over as, I, as our go-to choices. According to the Lancet Global Burden of Disease reports, they write, poor diet now generates more disease than physical inactivity, alcohol, and smoking combined. Did you think about that? The crappy garbage diet that dominates the standard American diet, the SAD diet, that diet now generates a lot more disease of all kinds than not exercising, than drinking alcohol, and smoking cigarettes, which all three of those activities are, are bad. But diet is far worse. It's more than all three of those combined. Huge. This is a disturbing statistic, but it gets worse. The related and larger issue 
is that even normal weight people who exercise will, if they eat poorly, have metabolic markers that put them at very high risk of chronic illness and early mortality. Again, having a belly on a body, you have a visible manifestation that something's going wrong in your body. If you're naturally thin and you don't have any manifestation of symptoms per se, how do you know you have high inflammation markers? How do you know you have high fasting insulin levels? How do you know your blood sugar is out of control? How do you know you have anything that's good happening in your health? You assume it because of your thinness, but not all disease manifests as weight on the body, not in everybody. And so I'm almost glad that it manifests as weight on my body because then I can be proactive and do something about it. I fear for all those people like my wife, Christine, who for many years thought she was perfectly healthy because of her thinness, when on the inside she was far less healthy than the vast majority of the population. And thankfully we were able to turn that around through a ketogenic diet and some other things, but the damage was done. And I think we need to be cognizant of that. It's one reason I'm so vocal about let's not judge people for their weight because there could be some people that are far worse in their health than someone who looks fat, but you look at someone who's got obesity on their body, oh, they're far, un they're so unhealthy. And I go, well, why don't you say that to a thin person? How do you know if they're healthy or unhealthy? You don't know is the point. And so why do we judge the person who's fat and we don't judge the person who's thin who happens to have metabolic derangement on the inside despite their thinness? A lot of philosophical stuff to think about here today. Up to 40% of those with a normal body mass index will harbor metabolic abnormalities typically associated with obesity. 40%. So think about all the thin people in your life. Think about them. Okay? That's a lot of people. 40%. 4 out of 10, 2 out of 5, 1 out of every... Two and a half. That's a lot of people. A lot of people. These symptoms include hypertension, uh, dyslipidemia, which means high lipids, non-alcoholic fatty, uh, fatty liver disease, and cardiovascular disease. This is why you see people that look relatively healthy, quote unquote, on the outside, who suddenly die of a heart attack. And they were thin as a rail. How in the world did that happen? They must have had, uh, they don't know. People just go, how does that happen? We know why it happens metabolically. You can be fat on the outside and thin on the inside and the vice versa. You can be thin on the outside and fat on the inside, meaning metabolically damaged. At the crux of this issue is this. We're continually fed the idea that all that's behind the rise in obesity is simply a lack of exercise or being sedentary. There have certainly been a lot of studies and popular articles that suggest sitting is our downfall. And back there in my recording studio, I have a standing work desk. Anytime you hear my voice behind the microphone and even here doing this Jimmy Rants, I'm standing up. I don't sit down. I stand up. Pretty cool, huh? In, uh, instead of effective messages about diet and health that science actually knows to be true, members of the public get drowned by an unhelpful message about maintaining a healthy weight through calorie counting, says the team in their paper, and many still wrongly believe that obesity is simply due to a lack of exercise. This false perception is rooted in the food industry's public relations machinery, which uses tactics chillingly similar to those of big tobacco. And we've talked about this before, how big food uh, got involved in things like uh, Hawaiian Punch and, and some of those kinds of things. And they literally stole the tactics of big tobacco in marketing to kids and, and all of this stuff. And they're exactly right in here. The perception is, well, just get your health, you get, just get your weight in a healthy range, as if that has any semantic value whatsoever. What does that mean to get your weight in a quote healthy range? 
Nobody's ever defined that. And by design, they don't want to define it. It's this abstract thing of uh, uh, don't eat too much. They'll say that kind of thing. Well, what does that mean? Um, and, and so be in a healthy way. Eat a balanced diet. That's another one. What does that mean? Uh, eat everything in moderation. Moderate arson, arsenic? Seriously? Moderation? Anyway, I'm getting off a little bit on a tangent, but I think you get the point is they have all these kind of tautologies tapping into that whole concept of your preconceived uh, conceptions of what health is. And if you have those images of all those poor contestants on The Biggest Loser walking on a treadmill and running and doing all these kind of things while a trainer was yelling at them, then you have it in your head. The key to weight loss is to do all this exercise. But what if it's not true at all? What if the key to weight loss truly is changing your nutrition and then exercise is a stress reliever, exercise is a conditioning kind of thing to go along with those dietary choices, but it's not the primary driver of weight loss. What we know to be true is much more simple. Sugar calories promote fat storage and hunger. And that's true. Insulin plays a huge role in that. Fat calories will induce fullness or satiation. Fat calories. Oh yeah, that fat. The fat that's supposed to make you fat. The fat that is supposed to clog your arteries and give you heart disease. Oh yeah, that's the same fat. And yet they say here, these researchers in this journal, that it induces fullness and satiation. That's not a bad thing. Isn't the holy grail of any diet plan that's worth its salt? Any weight loss plan that's worth its salt isn't the holy grail to not be hungry because when you're hungry, you don't stick with it. When you're hungry, you're constantly looking for, okay, what can I do to fulfill this hunger that I have? And hunger matters. It's why those of us that gravitate towards keto love it so much because not only do you get to eat delicious tasting foods, not cardboard like you did on every low fat diet, but now you get the satiation, the fullness, the ability to go long periods of time between eating and then when it's time to eat, it's not this hangriness. It's okay, I could eat. There's no panic whatsoever. For every additional 150 calories in sugar, like a can of soda, a person consumes per day, your risk for diabetes rises 11 fold. 11 fold for every additional 150 calories in sugar. And I shudder you guys because I didn't just have 150 extra calories of sugar. Back in my garbage days, I was doing 16 cans of Coke. I was doing the whole box of Little Debbie snack cakes. How I ever avoided type two diabetes is truly a miracle. And that was regardless, it was 11-fold increase, regardless of how much or how little they exercised. Exercise made no, didn't make a dent, but sugar had that profound of a negative in, impact. The single most effective thing people can do for their weight, according to this journal article, is restrict calories, but more importantly than that, is restrict your carbohydrates. And what, you, what happens when you restrict carbohydrates and you eat healthy fats in combination, you go these long periods of time of intermittent fasting, but you end up cumulatively eating less calories than you would if you were a sugar and carb burner. People can't wrap their heads around that. They like to mock people that go keto and don't count calories. But our argument is, look, we eat, we're satisfied, and then we don't think about food anymore. <laughs> doing this keto carnivore, I fall into a pattern of where I eat about one meal a day. And I have that meal, and yes, it's a sizable amount of food, but that's all I eat the whole day. And if that's all I'm eating the whole day, it might end up being less than if I had three square meals and three square snacks and a midnight snack of a crappy garbage diet. 
Um, my new book that's coming out in June is called Keto Clarity Cookbook, and I was just looking over some of the proofs of this book. Guys, this is a gorgeous, gorgeous book. If you loved my book, Keto Clarity, you're gonna love this cookbook. Um, and in the front matter, which is where I dominated a lot of the writing, we put a, a low-fat diet, typical day's worth of low-fat meals. And you had this high-carb breakfast and low-fat breakfast and then a mid-morning snack and then a, a midday meal and an afternoon snack and then uh, dinner and then after dinner and blah, blah, blah. All this eating all day long. Then you look at the, at the keto meals and it's like you wake up, you're not really hungry. Maybe you'll have a bulletproof coffee if you want it, but most people don't. Then you eat a nice lunch. Then in the afternoon, you don't really need any snacks because you're not hungry. Then dinner, if you're hungry, here's what, you know, like a sample of what you would eat. Uh, and if you want a dessert, here's some berries and blah, blah, blah. And I say, look at those two menus. It looks like you're eating a boatload of food on the low fat diet and it looks like you're hardly eating anything on the ketogenic diet, and yet both have the exact same number of calories. Yet which one makes you feel better? Which one satiates you? Which one leaves you not longing to have more food? It's the ketogenic one. So we're hoping that visual uh, really gives people this idea that yes, you're eating very dense, nutrient dense, uh, as well as dense calorically, foods and they're going to keep you well satiated for many hours to come. So if all of this is true and research seems to suggest it, how will it change? It might take quite a lot of work to shift our psychology around food, especially since advertising is so saturated with the message that carbohydrates are good for us. Man, they're right about that. I am amazed, you guys, in 2019, how we still see commercials on television for crappy garbage. And even the so-called healthy crappy garbage. Things like whole wheat bread and things like that. It's just amazing to me. All of the things and then the vilification of fat. It's just, it's, <laughs> I'm like, this just seems bizarre to me now. I know I'm really close to this message of keto because I'm in this space and one of the leaders, but... It's just still shocking when you see that kind of stuff. It's almost like they just, they don't want to believe it. But it's there. The celebrity endorsements might need to be tweaked, the authors say, and certainly the way foods are advertised and perhaps created need to be shifted. That's a great point too. A lot of what people buy is predicated heavily on what they're advertised and quite frankly, let's be honest with the local grocery stores, they could be a part of this solution as well. And I realize they have a template, they have this, this kind of model that sets it up with these food companies, giving them in cap space and selling that space to them. There's so many moving parts to how we change this model. But the bottom line is the model's broken. We're fatter and sicker than we've ever been. And all the exercise in the world is not gonna undo all of the damage that's been done by this food industry model that we're in. The public should be repeatedly hit with the message that whole natural food, foods where possible and affordable is the best way to go. We're starting to see that a little bit. I've seen some commercials for obviously uh, avocados in Mexico, got a nice Super Bowl ad uh, the last couple of years. Uh, same with pistachios, that's a really good one that's broken into the mainstream. I've seen some almond commercials, um, but for the most part, you're not seeing a lot of commercials for real whole foods. And partly is the margins are so low in promoting those things as compared to say cereal. Cereal, it costs them pennies on the dollar for what you pay. So for every like dollar, it costs them just a few pennies to make it. So they've got a huge advertising budget to be able to promote it. Whereas if you sell avocados from Mexico, you're paying the import fees. It's also a higher cost commodity. How they came up with the $2 million for a Super Bowl ad, I hope they sold a whole bunch of avocados to make up for that, but it's so hard to promote real whole food in television ads. So that's part of the challenge here. So if you're trying to lose weight, reduce your calories, especially from sugar sources, 
but don't think that exercise alone will cut it. And even if you're normal weight, you cannot subside solely on junk food and try to stay healthy. The authors end with this powerful finale. It is time to wind back the harms caused by the junk food industry's public relations machinery. Let us bust the myth of physical inactivity and obesity. You simply cannot outrun a bad diet. So if you missed the beginning of this Jimmy Ranch, you guys, there is an editorial that was published in the British Journal of Sports Medicine. And these, God bless these three authors who pointed the finger at our diet, pointed the finger at the sugary, carby, junk foody, uh, crappy garbage, as I call it, types of foods being the culprit in why you can't lose weight and can't uh, get everything in order despite your exercise level, good, bad, or ugly. And again, I'm going to reiterate it. Exercise is great. Please go exercise for all the great benefits. To me, the biggest benefit that I get besides muscle building from exercise, uh, the biggest benefit that I get is it's a bit of a stress relief. And so if you have stress in your life, it's a great way to let some of that out. Um, try flipping a tire. You will have a whole new appreciation for letting the stress out of your life. So... So guys, the bottom line in this Jimmy Rants, exercise won't work for weight loss so long as you still have sugar and carbs dominating your diet. This is why professional athletes that maybe load up on carbs and, and sugar and yet they do a lot of exercise when they retire from their professional uh, sport start to balloon up and you can ward that off if you get rid of the culprit and ballooning you up. And it's not the lack of exercise, it's the addition of sugar and carbs. All right, let's see what you guys have to say. We'll be over here in just a minute on Facebook Live. Welcome in, welcome in. Thanks for being here. My blood sugar is below 50 in the morning, says Joe. Well, context is everything, Joe. I don't know what that means. If you're, if you've got eight, you know, seven or eight blood ketones, 50 is probably normal. Uh, if you're fasting, 50 is probably normal. So if you're symptomatic, that's when you need to pay attention to that. Low carb diet uh, and fasted exercise like biking is great, says Gerald. Yes, and see when you when you are low carb keto, and you know this, Gerald, because you you are a fitness guy. When you are that way, you're able to exercise in a fasted state, and you're able to get some of the benefits that come from that uh, inflammation lowering. Uh, in, uh, insulin lowering, insulin sensitivity improving, so many good benefits that have nothing to do with your weight. Uh, Corella says, I lost 180 pounds on keto and walking. Excellent. I would argue it's mostly keto that did that for you. Hello, Olga. Thanks for being here. Uh, you can't outrun a bad diet. No, you cannot, Val. Uh, let's see here. At the hospital, it is hard to stay keto. Not many keto options. Yeah, Olga is in the hospital right now. Um, and yeah, you do the best you can, Olga. I mean, I, I realize you have limited choices. Tell them if they could bring you meat as much as possible, that's the best choice. The vegetables is the next best choice. Uh, just stay away from like the applesauce and the bread and all that stuff that they try to push on you. Mansoor says, hi, Jimmy. Just wanted to personally thank you. I can proudly say watching your and Dr. Jason Fung's videos helped me reverse my type 2 diabetes. Wow. With intermittent fasting and low-carb keto, no exercise. That's so awesome. And again, I think if you want to incorporate exercise, it's not a bad thing, but it's not the exercise that's going to help you with the weight loss. It's merely uh, the diet and eliminating those sugars and carbs. Keto Bob says, I feel great when I'm exercising on a regular basis, but it never really helped me lose weight. I have lost and gained a lot over the years. Yes. Kitty Caddick says, weight, fat loss is such a complex thing. Food, timing, sleep, stress, activity. In my case, I can't maintain a lean body without doing HIIT training, but only once or twice a week, and the benefits are endless. Yeah, I love HIIT training. Um, I have gotten a bit out of the habit of it and hope to get back in that after all my crazy travel that's coming up uh, calms down. And definitely during my six month sabbatical. Uh, Bob says, wife always thin, model cholesterol level, works out 4.30 a.m. every morning like 
uh, clockwork has 35% blockage in her carotid artery. Yeah. People would look at her on the outside and say picture of health. And yet on the inside, metabolically not so much. Sam says, yes, we get to eat good food, but you don't eat so much of it. You end up saving money. And then if you do periods of fasting, like long periods of fasting, it's the same kind of thing. Um, you save money. Uh, Mary says, grass-fed anything is still way too expensive. Well, it doesn't have to be. Um, there are ways around that. If you talk to your local farmer or farmer's market, they can wheel and deal you. Um, so don't make that your excuse for not eating grass-fed if you can squeeze it into the budget. I think about all that money I used to spend on Coca-Cola. Um, I would get the 12 packs of Coke, and of course this has been over 15 years ago now, but the 12 packs of Coke, I would get them like five for $10, and I would just load up on them, you guys, because I was drinking 16 a day. So five 12 packs only lasted me about three-ish days, three, four days, and, and I'd go get some more. Uh, and then they raised the price from $10 for five of them to $12 for five of them. Then they went from $12, and I don't know what they are now, but um, it was a lot of money spending on empty calories that weren't doing anything for me. So I think about all that money I used to spend on the crap, even the 10 for $10 boxes of Little Debbie snack cakes, all that money now being allocated towards real whole foods, all that money towards higher quality foods. I'm not eating those things as often. You've got the money. If you make it a priority, you've got the money. Struggled for years uh, trying to out-exercise a crappy garbage diet, says uh, Sisquillin. Switched to keto and it started falling off. Yep. Exercise can indirectly affect your fat percentage in your body, but the main reason to be active is not a weight loss benefit. My favorite is stress relief. Yep, grounding, sunshine, light exposure, beach walks, and hiking. Yeah, I love the benefits of the muscle growth. Um, my strength that I got just from that intensive amount of HIIT training I did last year, I still have that same strength. And it's another reason when we have the time and we're off for that six months, guys, I'm hoping when I get off September the 1st and I'm away for six months and in addition to the stress uh, relief, hopefully that will come from that, when I come back in March of next year, I'd love to be swole. How cool would that be? <laughs> you guys won't recognize me because I'll be so swole. That's what I'm hoping happens. Uh, and bonding with the loved ones, talking, uh, talking about uh, the exercise. Beth says, definitely fasted workouts have more punch to them. Yes, yes they do. In my humble opinion, Beth says, exercise can work uh, for weight loss, even on sad, but the health markers stay tanked. I say do keto, work smart, not hard. Yes, exactly. All right, let's pop over here to Facebook. Thank you guys for being here. Welcome in, welcome in. Let's see what you got to say here about this. Brenda says, what's up? Boys. Okay, we're back. <laughs> so, sorry about that, guys. My connection got a little bit wonky there. We are back. We're going to the uh, Facebook uh, questions now. Mitzi says, eat less, move more is not the cause of weight loss. It's an effect of weight loss. Ooh, I love that, Mitzi. That's great. Padme, who is a an exercise specialist, exercise does not balance out a bad diet. Never will, will it? Dawn says, I was hearing so much about those low-carb tortillas that I bought some over the weekend, tried them on Tuesday, Wednesday. Yesterday, I was so sick to my stomach, I gained three pounds. I was hearing so much about them, I wanted to give them a try. Well, lesson learned, right? Don't do that. <laughs> uh, I thought it was just me that feels hungry all day on the days I go to the gym. No, Dawn, there is a physiological reason for that. You are actually increasing your uh, hunger hormones when you exercise. People don't think about it that way. They're just like, oh, I'm going to I'm gonna work off that donut that I had. And what they don't realize is the donut spiked their insulin and turned on hunger hormones to want to eat more because it's nutrient, nutrient deficient. But then they go and exercise thinking they're working off the donut. And that also is ramping up hunger hormones, which is why if you're eating a crappy garbage diet and then you go exercise, you're really hungry and it makes people binge. 
it's disgusting, kind of the thought process of people and what they believe. Uh, skinny does not mean healthy. No, it does not, Dawn. People are learning that the hard way. What is your Instagram account uh, name, says Dawn. So it's Livin' Low Carb Man. L-I-V-I-N-L-O-W-C-A-R-B-M-A-N. Uh, you can get a link at jimmyrants.com. Jessica says, I knew a lady who was very overweight. She started living on low-fat foods, coffee, pretzels, fruit, Twizzlers, uh, indulged occasionally in alcohol. She ended up being very skinny and sickly. I lost track of her, but I hope she figured it out and is still with us. Yeah. Kathy says, poster in the doctor's office showed apples, bananas, and carrots for help with diabetes. I wanted to pull it down. Yeah, we've got a guy coming on the Keto Hacking MD podcast tomorrow, uh, and he's a blue light specialist. And so he's like, this is probably a bad example on a keto podcast, but think about apples and apple juice. And we all know that if you eat the whole apple, that's really good for your diabetes. And blah, blah, blah. John and I were just going, what? <laughs> I suppose if you're insulin sensitive, sure, why not? Uh, I went twice a week to a dance exercise class for six months, says Val. I would hurt a lot the next day, even doing modifications, inflammation in my joints, Gained back 25 of the 60 pounds that I lost. Now my exercise is working in the yard and camping and the weight is coming back off. That's awesome, Val. Valerie says, fell off the keto wagon but had uh, to stay active in the gym. No weight loss or gain, but painful joints again. Back on the wagon for good this time. Well, good luck to you. Dan says, I have a client in a wheelchair, has lost 75 pounds over four months. That's amazing. She's out of the chair now and lost all her weight without exercise and, oh yeah, off pain meds too. That's cool. Chastity says, my grocery bill is now one-third of what it used to be. Yeah, mine's probably, uh, probably a lot better than that. Um, and I buy really high-quality food. Um, along with no longer buying all the crappy garbage. So uh, no more stocking up on 10 or 12, 12 packs of Coca-Cola. I'm now stocking up on grass-fed beef. Jessica says, my sister lost 60 pounds in preparation for major double back surgery despite severe pain and very limited mobility. No exercise. She's under the knife right now. Uh, the weight loss will make it easier for the surgeons to do their job and allow her to heal more quickly, uh, we hope and believe. Well, good luck to her. Dawn says, what are your thoughts on what breaks a fast? We're not doing general questions, sweetie. This is a show I do called Jimmy Rant. So the topic at hand is exercise won't work for weight loss if sugar and carbs dominate the diet. If you'd like to ask me that question, we do an open Q&A every single Friday on Jimmy Rants. So tomorrow is your day to ask your general question. So please bring that one back tomorrow uh, in the afternoon. We will be answering Q&A. Maria says, totally addicted to my after exercise glow. I love my sweat stinky self. Showering and afterwards is my namaste. Love it. Uh, let's see here. Staying on track, doing OMAD, says Sherry. I started keto last year, says Beth. I tended as a quick fix uh, after zero visual results at the gym every day for 40 days, but keto is now working. That's cool, Beth. Keep it up. Mark says, still down 115 plus pounds, almost off of all my prescription, things are doing great. One year ketoversary, still insulin resistant. Yeah, and you might have the insulin resistance for a little while. You can manage some of the manifestations of it, but it's gonna probably be there for a little while. All right, let's come back over to Instagram. I predict we're not gonna be able to recognize you when you come back. Well, I, I hope you recognize my humor. That's not gonna go away. <laughs> but uh, physi physiologically, I do hope that uh, things do radically change, so. All right, guys, so the bottom line in this Jimmy Rants, exercise will not work for weight loss. Please spread that message. I'm tired of people feeling like, because the first thing they do is they get on keto and they go, okay, I gotta get in the gym and exercise for four hours a day, and I'm like, why? 
if you want to, that's great, but there's no requirement. I'd say get keto adapted very well. And then once that happens, then if you feel so energetic, you've got to let it out, then go to the gym. If you feel like you've got stress building up and you want to use it as a stress relief, uh, stress relief, then go to the gym. But don't do it as a primary way of losing weight. That's not the role of exercise. And so hopefully by now you realize it is the sugar and it is the carbs that dominate the diet that's causing so much of the obesity and disease people are dealing with and that exercise is a complementary part of that health journey with keto, but it's not the thing that's gonna make you happy and healthy and lose weight. That's it for this episode of Jimmy Rants. JimmyRants.com is the website. As always, go follow me over on Instagram. I'm at Livin Low Carb Man, L I V I N L O W C A R B M A N. Once you're there, you can engage live in the content. We also go live over here on Facebook Live. Thank you guys for being here. Stick around for the Jimmy Rants after party in just a moment. If you missed the live on Instagram, you can watch it on replay for up to 24 hours. After 24 hours, go over to YouTube. That's where we house all the past episodes of Jimmy Rants. Type in a keyword, Jimmy Rants, or you can do it on Google, YouTube. You can also go to youtube.com slash, what else? Live in low carb, man. Finally, the best of the best moments of this here show, they're in podcast form. It's the Jimmy Rants podcast over on Apple Podcasts and Stitcher. All of these links, you guys, are at jimmyrants.com. Calm. So until next time, Instagram Live, we'll see you then.